Let's talk about rules for simplifying exponents. We have multiplying powers as our first rule. That means when we have a to the m power times a to the n power, that would be equal to a to the m plus n power. So in multiplying powers, we add their exponents. The next rule states dividing powers. So when we have a to the m power divided by a to the n power, that would be equal to a to the m minus n power. So when we're dividing powers, we need to subtract. Multiplying you add, dividing you subtract. The next rule states power of a power. So when we have a to the m power to the n power, we need to multiply and we get a to the m times n power. The next rule is power of a product. When we have a times b to the m power, we can distribute in a way and we get a to the m power times b to the m power. So they both end up with the power of m. We have power of a quotient. That's when we're dividing. So if we have a divided by b all to the m power, we have to say that that's equivalent to a to the m power divided by b to the m power. So again, both variables would get the exponent the same way with the product. You sort of distribute. The negative exponents have to be taken care of a little differently. If we have a to the negative m power, we have to fix it by putting it in the denominator. So we would write it as 1 over a to the m power, and it would be positive. Or if it's already in the denominator, we then need to move it to the numerator to make it positive. So if we're given something that has a negative exponent like a to the negative m, and it's at the bottom of our fraction, we simply need to move just that variable to the top. The zero exponents simplify rather easily. Anything to the zero power, anything, is equal to 1. So a to the zero power is equal to 1. The product of a times b to the zero power would be equal to 1. The product, if it's all grouped together, to the zero power would all equal 1. Some examples of our exponent rules. Let's look at number 1. Number 1 states 2m squared times 2m cubed. We would multiply the numbers, the coefficients, 2 and 2, and we get 4. And then we simply need to add the exponents for m. So we have 2 plus 3 would be m to the fifth power. In example 2, we have 4a cubed b squared times 3a to the negative fourth power b to the negative third power. Again, we need to multiply the numbers out front, the coefficients of our terms. So we have 4 times 3 would give us 12. Then we need to go back to each variable and add the exponents together. So we have a cubed and a to the negative fourth power. So 3 plus negative 4 would equal a to the negative 1 power. We'll fix that in just a second. We have b squared and b to the negative third power. So when we add 2 plus negative 3, that equals b to the negative 1 power. Now we cannot leave negative exponents. It's just not simplified yet. So we need to write it as 12 and then move the a and the b, since they both have a negative 1, to the denominator to make them positive. And now we're finished. So we have 12 over a, b. Example 3. We have x squared to the 0 power. So 2 times 0, that's the power of a power. So we multiply 2 times 0, and we get x to the 0 power, and that's equal to 1. You could have skipped this step if you noticed this was all to the 0 power. It would automatically equal 1. Number 4, we have 3k to the 4th power. So we have a product, and we have a power of 4. So this is power of a product. So each piece of our product needs to go to the 4th power. 3 to the 4th power and k to the 4th power times the 4th power gives us 16. We could simply do 3 to the 4th power either by hand or with our calculator and we get 81 k to the 16th power as our answer. Our next example, number 5, has a big product, 2 x to the 4th y to the negative 3rd power all to the negative 1 power. We need to fix this negative 1 power first. 
So we rewrite our fraction and put everything on the bottom since all of our product was to the negative power. It'll make it positive now and then we can continue to simplify. So I have 1 over 2x to the fourth y to the negative 3. Notice none of those powers have changed. The only thing that did was fix that negative 1. Now I need to rewrite it so that the y will be positive 3, so I put it in the numerator, and just bring over the 2x to the fourth, because they don't have anything else to simplify together with. So then my final answer is y cubed over 2x to the fourth. In my next example, I have r squared over 2r cubed. I need to subtract. This is dividing power, so I have r squared and r cubed. 2 minus 3 would be negative 1. Leave the 2 on the bottom. It has no reason it should move to the top. But we do need to fix the negative 1 power, so we need to rewrite this expression as a 1 over 2 times r. Without the 1, this would be an incorrect answer, because 2r and 1 divided by 2r are not the same answer. Number 7, we have 4x to the 0 power, y to the negative 2 power, z cubed, all divided by 4x. We have a 4 and a 4 on the bottom, so they canceled out. We have x to the 0 power, which just equals 1. So the whole beginning of our expression would just simply cancel out, or divide to equal 1. We have y to the negative 2, so I moved it to the bottom. x is still on the bottom, so we have xy squared now in the denominator, and z cubed stays in the numerator. So then this big expression simplified pretty quickly since we noticed the 4's could cancel and that this x would simply equal 1. Now let's look at some application examples. Here are two application examples. In the first one we're given a right triangle with legs 3x squared and 4xy and we're asked to find the area of the triangle. It's always good to draw a figure if they don't draw one for you and label it properly. So I've drawn a right triangle and I have labeled the legs 3x squared and 4xy. The legs are the two sides that are not across from the right angle. That would be the hypotenuse. I know the area of any triangle is 1 half base times height. For the base and the height of a right triangle, either the leg could be the base or the height. Since we're multiplying, it won't matter which order we write it. I put 1 half 4xy for my base and 3x squared for my height. I put together the 4 times 3 to give me 12, x times x squared, I had to add those exponents. When there is no exponent on a variable, you can understand that it would be a 1. In math, we don't write those ones because they're understood. Any other number will be written there. So I know there's a 1 on the x and a 2 over here, so I add them up to get 3, and I simply bring the y down. Now all I need to do is 1 half of 12. So I get 6x cubed y. For my second example, I'm given the area of a rectangle is 16x squared y. And the length of the rectangle is 4x. And I'm asked to find the width. So I didn't draw a picture for this one since I know the area of a rectangle is simply length times width. I filled in the information they gave me. But of course you can draw a picture if it helps. So I have 16x squared y as my area. I put the length is 4x that they gave me, and I have the width in parentheses to know that I need to get this w by itself. I'm looking for the width. So I divided both sides by 4x in order to get w by itself. Dividing 16x squared y by 4x is the dividing powers property, so I need to subtract my exponents. I divided the numbers, so 16 divided by 4 would give me 4. I have x squared and a 1 at the bottom, so 2 minus 1 is just 1. And then y stays in the numerator, I just bring it down. So my final answer would be that the width of my rectangle is 4xy.